This episode was recorded in front of a live audience where viewers voted for the ingredients. It has been edited down from its original runtime. There's just a ton of natural light coming in through the side window in here today. So we got a lot to do today. These fine folks right here are the patrons and YouTube members that support our YouTube channel doing the most. These folks get to vote every week on what style of brew we're gonna brew on Brews Lab. They have voted this week for cider, but there was a lot of back and forth in the voting between cider and beer. So we're gonna do what's called graph. It's gonna be cider forward. We're gonna use some pale ale liquid malt extract. I've got apple juice concentrate so we can control our gravity. We need to start out trying to kind of calculate. My thinking was we would add half of the thing of pale ale LME, one full thing of apple concentrate, and then the rest of this would be water. I would guess that that would put us in the realm of like 1.09. Pretty high. We'll put it in here, get it warmed up enough so that the LME kind of moves, but we're not gonna do a boil. We've got four boxes that we're gonna talk through today, three of which we're gonna vote on. We've also got the wild card, and we're gonna do something a little different with the wild card today. So hang tight for that. First box that we're gonna talk about is our adjunct box. This box here, I'll stand up. That way you have something to work with, buddy. So this is our adjunct box. What we're gonna do, pretty much any of these adjuncts can go either in here or once we get it into the primary fermentation vessel, but at least one of them would need to be treated with a little bit of heat. Butter Idea asks, how's the durian one from a few weeks ago doing? It is still aggressively fermenting. Bloop, 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 bloop. No jokes. There's no humor on this show. We're serious business. First thing we've got in here is lemon zest. We're not gonna use the juice from this. We don't need any acid in here. I got this fancy schmancy zester we can use. Give it a little zestiness. Second up on our potential options, this is cinnamon extract. Looks like it's packaged with water, alcohol, glycerin, and cinnamon oil. I mean, it looks homogenous. There's nothing floating on top like you see with like maple extract sometimes. So total departure from lemon zest. Third option for our adjunct box, fresh Driscoll's blueberries. Look at those. I think my plan for this would be that I would have them, throw them in there, give them a little bit of a mash as it's like warm and steeping, strain them out when we go to the jug. So we could extract some color and a little bit of berry flavor, but a lot it's probably gonna get blown off in primary. But color might be nice. Lastly, in our box, you may recognize this from a previous episode of Brews Lab, sorrel. If I recall, y'all said it's kind of lemony. It's a little bit, in appearance, it's a little bit like hibiscus. I don't recall if it's related to hibiscus, but it's, it's a very dark, very purple flower dried out like this, intended for tea. Pro tip, if you're looking for interesting ingredients, check your local Asian or Hispanic markets. Stuff in there that you won't find at your typical grocery store. While y'all are discussing those, I'm gonna get started uh, getting some stuff in here. Hibiscus is great in cider. It's also a nice colorant for cider. So sorrel might fill that gap nicely. Cinnamon extract could be interesting. It may not be necessarily seasonal, but it could be interesting. Because this is a style I've not brewed before, for the most part, I tried to choose ingredients that were gonna be complementary to the style, things that would pair well. You know, as a kid, I didn't really care for apple juice, but as an adult, apple juice and apple cider are like weirdly very enticing to my palate. Lemon zest, we would probably zest right into primary. The cinnamon extract, we'd probably have to do a little bit of a taste test to see just how punchy that is. Probably right into primary also. The sorrel, I would think what we would probably need to do is steep that, maybe in our hot liquor over here, and then strain that out. I'm trying to weigh out one and a half pounds. We're at three pounds, seven ounces. So that means I need to take it down to basically two pounds even. <laughs> yes, check that out. Check that out. Nailed it. Nailed it. When it comes to eyeballing ingredients, 2020. Don't ask me to do that with my glasses off though. 
Cruzen says, wait, are we doing beer or cider? This is what I get for coming late. <laughs> We're doing a graph. So both. Nobody's going for the blueberries or lemon zest. Lemon zest could, could have been really nice in this, but I also understand that that's a safe option. And we tend to not do safe options on this show. We've got the heat on here. I set it for medium low, which is 175. I might crank it up a little bit. All I'm trying to do though is get this LME moving. Stir, stir, stir. This is the beer from Brews Live episode seven. We made two gallons. We added licorice root to one of them. So I wanted to taste this because I'm curious where it's fallen. It's been about five days now. Looks like sorrel won by two votes. So we'll add some sorrel. This just smells like beets. You just don't expect it. It's sweet. It really picked up that sweetness. We may have gone overboard on the licorice. Ah. Maybe it'll be better with carbonation. Okay, well, that's a fun experiment. A-B tests on that should be interesting. So, sorrel, what are we doing? Eight ounces of water and 30 grams of sorrel. Make a tea. Then we got other stuff to do. Yo, that is strong. It smells a little bit hibiscus-y, but it mostly smells like lemon. Not super floral. It definitely has a hibiscus adjacent aromatic. On point with our measuring today. Next up, y'all are gonna vote on hops. While you're voting on that, we're gonna pull off the Jack Keller inspired country fruit wine that we made. So I took a gravity reading on this prior to the show today and it is well below 1.000. It is done fermenting. It's off gassing really heavily. I'm gonna trust the spigot on Mr. Beer here and just run it down the side of a gallon jug until we get it all out of here. The fruit is still relatively intact despite what we uh, presumed may happen. It's still hanging out on top, but the yeast has really firmly flocculated at the bottom. So my hope is that using the spigot, we can rack off from between those two layers without too much uh, transfer of solids. So in this box, I've got four hops options. We'll need to determine how much we want to use of them and we'll need to talk about them because I'm pretty sure, yeah, I have not ever brewed with any of the hops in here. So we may need to consult the old uh, hops handbook, but I think all of these are packaged with descriptors on the front, so we should be good. We won't even use a tea bag, we'll just throw them right in the primary. That way we pick up just a touch of hop aromatics on this. Distracted. It's soaking up all of our liquid. So first hop up we have is Green Bullet. It has distinct floral and musky notes of melon and red berry. Does that not sound freaking phenomenal? Second option, we have laurel. Would bring us floral, pepper, lemony, citrus, and dark fruit flavors. Get hype. Third option for hops is zithos. Citrus and tropical fruit, Zithos. And our last option, Azaka, which has apricot, ripe mango, orchard fruit, and pine. So while y'all are voting on that, let's get this transferred off. So I'm just gonna run this down the side of the gallon jug because I don't know what else to do. You can put a bottling wand on the spigot for Mr. Beer, and that works pretty well. We have also used an auto siphon to siphon out of the top of Mr. Beer, but we have a unique circumstance here where this is off-gassing pretty heavily, so I'm not really worried about oxidization at this juncture. And we also have a hell of a lot of stuff floating in here that I am concerned about transferring over with our wine. This was made with honeydew melon, banana, coconut, and invert sugar. We used EC1118 as our yeast. This was inspired by the late, great Jack Keller, really just a god of country fruit winemaking. He passed last year. His book comes out on Amazon, I think later in April. Jack was a great guy and uh, basically taught me everything I know. All right, <laughs> we did it. 
Go team. Laurel is up by one vote right now. It smells just like the most heat. It just smells like all booze on the nose. Whew. <laughs> In a lot of ways, that tastes exactly how I expected it to taste. Ah, looks like Azaka is our winner. The tannin is there. We achieved tannin. There's banana and melon at the front of the palate, so somehow some of that honeydew remained. It's incredibly dry. Like, I feel like I need a Powerade. God dang, that's dry. No coconut. It's gonna need a heavy back sweetening. Azaka was our choice for hops. I'll let y'all decide how much we're gonna add. Typically we do between like six and 18 grams, depending on what we're doing. So I'm thinking like maybe eight to 10 grams, just yeeted right in. It looks like we're coming up close on our half hour mark for our sorrel tea. It has effectively stained the spoon. I didn't ruin Casey's spoon, Anna. I added flair. Casey would be hyped for this, y'all. Consider it like a badge of honor. Let's get hype in the chat for the wild card box. We're gonna do something a little different today. So currently what we have is we've got pale ale liquid malt extract and apple juice concentrate in here. That's gonna be our base. You have voted for sorrel as our adjunct and we are making a very pink tea out of our sorrel here and it's almost done with a half an hour steep. Also, we're using Azaka hops. How does the tea taste, asks Sean. Are you doing this because you know it's going to cause me to make a face? Woo! Yeah, it's lemony. There's not like hibiscus flavors in here. It's very lemony. I think we're at the right place with this too. I think 30 minutes was a good suggestion for steep. Let's add our sorrel tea to the mix over here. And then we're going to talk about wild card. We're gonna save our yeast box for the end. We're gonna jump ahead to wild card. Still smells of apple though, apple and malt. So that's good. I was re-watching an episode the other day where we voted for autocracy versus democracy. And overwhelmingly, you all seem to think that democracy was our path forward. Here's what we're gonna do today. We are gonna do senior class president. I need the chat to nominate two nominees for senior class president. Once we have our two nominees, Rob's gonna throw up a poll and we're gonna vote for our senior class president. And that person is gonna be the one who makes decisions about this box. And they may delegate a decision to y'all. Who are the two most trustworthy people to entrust this wild card box too. And you're not allowed to run for senior class president. You have to be nominated. Also, you can't nominate Rob because Rob knows what's in here. I will tell you there are a couple of things in here that could work and a couple of things in here that I don't think you want in your graph. <laughs> senior year is one of the, it's, it's your last hurrah, man. That's it, that's it. And then you just get pummeled down by life for the next 60 years. <laughs> oh man, I loved high school. It was a mess. I went to a small school from a rural-ish community. You never knew what was gonna happen day to day at that school. Yeah, high school can be a trip for some people. I was very fortunate with my experience. I'll say that. All right, who are your nominees? I'm gonna weigh out our hops. We're gonna do 10 grams of Azaka. Yo, these smell good. The nose on this reminds me a lot of Waiiti hops. With that one removed, 10 grams exactly. Okay, Paula's our winner. Okay, Paula, first decision. Do we open the wild card box? If we open it, we have to use an ingredient from within it. There's some bangers in there. It's not all crap. Paula says, hell yes, open it. Here we go. Wild card box. This will be added in primary, no matter what you choose. First choice, 
is a medium toast oak. I want to say that this is American oak, but a medium toast oak. Probably wouldn't use all of this, probably use about a third of it or so. You know, it's only going to be in there a couple weeks, so you're not going to get a crazy amount of an extraction, but it would definitely bring some tannin, bring some softness, a little bit of softness. Obviously that oaky woodiness that we all love could go really well in something like this. Second option, we've got one carton of high C ecto cooler. I got stacks of cartons of ecto cooler still sitting in here. This was from the re-release when Lady Ghostbusters came out. I don't want to throw you off, but this is best by January 30th of 2017. Third option. We've got coriander. Spicy, earthy, herbal. Could give a nice punch of je ne sais quoi to our graph here. Final ingredient, wasabi. Your options for wild card are ecto cooler, oak chips, wasabi, or coriander. Your second choice, Paula. Are you going to choose the wild card ingredient or do you trust the 40 people watching right now to make this decision democratically? Paula has chosen autocracy. This is the this is the person that you chose for for your senior class president. Elections have consequences. Wait, are we going wasabi? Are we doing that? <laughs> well then, how much do we use? Y'all are ridiculous. Yes, that it, Mr. Russian. This is almost definitely not real wasabi. This this does come from our Asian market but uh, it's almost definitely the, the green dyed horseradish stuff. A tablespoon or two? Have you had wasabi, Paula? The whole damn thing. The decision has been made. Y'all, do you really want to do that to this brew? Teaspoon max, go big or go home. Adjust in secondary, mm, needs just a touch more wasabi. Anarchy does reign. Okay, a teaspoon, a teaspoon of wasabi. can smell it. Looks like baby food. Nothing like a little hops and a little wasabi to brighten up a brew. I think I might be committing a sin here. Let's get our liquor in here. We've got one more poll to run for our last box, which is our yeast box. Option number one is Safale's USO5, I, don't, I can't see that very well. USO5 ale yeast, pretty clean fermenting ale yeast. It's clean, it's reliable, doesn't produce a lot of interesting or offensive flavors. Good, crispy ale yeast that in a cider would work relatively well. Second option we've got is D47, great yeast for cider. Not necessarily a great yeast for fermenting malt though. May have some trouble consuming the malt sugars in a way that an ale yeast would not, but that could be a blessing. Third option for yeast, Paramount's W04. It says that it has an attenuation rate of 90 to 100%. Not really a beer yeast, not really a wine yeast, really selected for like, I guess fermenting what, dextrose? Could be an interesting choice. Last yeast option, is our Kolsch style ale yeast. My understanding is it's got like fruity, cidery, summery kind of flavor profiles. So if it were me, this would probably be my choice. So I'll let y'all debate that before Rob throws up a poll. I have a feeling I know what y'all are gonna choose. <laughs> All right, I really want to make sure we get our uh, wasabi mixed in there. Y'all are favoring that Kolsch yeast, huh? We are right on the line of 1.050. More concentrate, you want me to add like a half a can of concentrate? Apple's pretty forward. It tastes like apple juice. 
Part of that's that malt sweetness in there, but it tastes like apple juice. It's a little bit hard to discern because there's like hop chunks floating around. So I got like hops right to the tongue. I'll put in a half a can, that'll top us up, and then we'll, we'll take a measurement from there. That'll help us retain some of the apple on the other end of it. Fortunately, I can't taste the wasabi in this just yet. I think it's just sitting in a little ball on the bottom. We've got our wasabi, I think, mixed up. The only chunks I'm seeing in there right now look like they're hops pellets. Take your guesses. I'm kind of amazed at how much that took the gravity up. It is sitting right at 1.080, right on the line. Factor, there's some malt sugars in there, so even though that it looks like it's at about 10% potential ABV, we're probably closer to 9% ABV. That's high. Do we want to dilute it down a little bit more, or y'all just want to let it ride? Let's dilute it a little bit more. Dilute it with more wasabi. Look at that color. Gorgeous. Ruby red. 1.072. Yeah, you just want to see me drink this wasabi juice. I know why y'all show up now. It's possible we went too light on the wasabi. Like y'all said, we could adjust in secondary. It tastes like apple juice. If you want to add more, we can add a little bit more. If you want to wait until secondary, we can wait until secondary. Adding in our Kolsch yeast. Tell you what, there's still a little bit on the knife. You want to go ahead and eat that in? So that's probably another half teaspoon. Good opportunity to get our yeast mixed in here. So there you have it, a graph with can and a half of apple juice concentrate, pound and a half of pale ale liquid malt extract, Azaka hops at 10 grams, about a teaspoon and a half of wasabi, and 30 grams of sorrel steeped into a tea, topped up with water using Grolsch ale yeast. It's gonna be something. Thank you for joining me, as always. Big shout out to these folks, our patrons and VIP YouTube members. They get to vote on the style every week. So you can go to doingthemost.org for information on how to become a patron. It's on the sidebar there. Or just click join under any of our YouTube videos to become a member. We really appreciate the folks who sustain and support all of this. I think today was what I would call a moderate success. I think I would have gone with probably the oak if it were me, but YOLO. It's not every day you get the opportunity to see what wasabi tastes like in a cider beer. You can follow us on Instagram and Pinterest at doing the most okay. Our website's doingthemost.org. We have a Discord server at discord.doingthemost.org. Stay safe, drink responsibly, and uh, be well. Yeah.